So today we're checking out this old kit. This is the 2005 Gunner Zaku Warrior. And I believe this is also known as the Luminaria's Gunner Zaku Warrior, which at the time of this video is just come out, I believe in Japan as a master grade. And that's the reason why I picked up this kit, even though it's super old. Um, I just figured it would be cool to pop this together before I get my hands on that new master grade kit and be able to do a comparison between the two. So this is it. As, as you can see, the kit was originally produced in, let's see if I can, you guys can see that, 2005 there. And I believe this is technically a no grade kit because if you look around the box, there are no markings for grade, although it is marked as a 1-100 scale. So technically, I think this is a no grade 1-100 scale kit. So same size as a master grade, but not master grade quality is what I expect in this. Go ahead and put this guy together. I am gonna paint this, I think, just because it is pink. And I don't know how much I really gonna like the pink. So we'll do our own little custom paint job for this guy. And then once the new one comes out, we'll compare the two. First of all, let's take a look at the box real quick. So got the Gunner Zaku Warrior on the front here, Luminaria right here on the front. So on the side here, we've got a nice picture of it, top to bottom. Looking at this, it looks like this is gonna be a very plain kit. There's like, from here, it looks like there's like really no detailing as far as like panel lines go or anything like that. I'm expecting this to be a very simple yet large kit, honestly. So that's it for that side. On this other side here, we have a nice front and back shot of it here. Um, nice backpack, backpack looks really good. As well as, we can see here how the backpack detaches. It also has its equivalent of the Zaku machine gun and its equivalent of the Zaku Heat Hawk as well as its main armament, which is this large uh, cannon here. And then of course the end caps, end caps are standard, same as always. So let's break into this and get started on this thing. So real quick, here's our manual here. And I actually like this this manual, even though it's an old school manual, it's got a nice color to it, really, which is kind of surprising. And we've got our, all our standard Bandai type stuff in here, our runner display here, as well as what parts aren't used. And this comes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This comes with eight runners, plus the poly caps. And yeah, this looks pretty simple. There are some color correcting stickers in here that we'll get to, but I don't expect this to be a long project. So, cool. So one cool thing about this kit is you get this like little nice card of Luminaria in here. And this has got a nice little info card of her. It shows her age, her height, birthday, constellation, blood type, um, the fact that she's a coordinator and her machine. So that's really cool. I like that. And here's our set of color correcting stickers. Not as many stickers as I, as I thought it would be, but um, we'll, we'll see what happens and see whether or not we decide to use these or not. And just to switch things up, I think I'm gonna use the USA Gundams this time for this project. If you guys wanna see a, a review of these nippers versus um, some of my other nippers, mainly my D-Space and my God Hands, as well as a couple color, a couple other nippers that we have. Just uh, check out this video up there and uh, you guys can check out the review of those. So here we go guys, I've got everything snapped up. So here is our 1100 scale Gunner Zaku Warrior, as this is called. But you know, it came together pretty good. This definitely does not build like a uh, master grade. So if you're if you're thinking of picking this up in the in the hopes that this will come together and feel like a master grade, definitely do not. 
It definitely does not feel like any type of masquerade ever, <laughs> at least not that I've built. I would say that this is really just a large, um, old school uh, high grade is how I would describe it. But even still, it does have some good posability. So let's run through everything real quick and take a look at how everything moves around. So starting with the head here, and one thing you will notice about the head is there is no eye here. And while this does come with a foil sticker sheet for the eye, the reason I chose to leave it blank is because I think I might actually paint this kit um, afterwards. So I just didn't want to ruin that mono eye just in case I do intend to use it or just in case I do decide to use that eye. So that's why the eye's not here. But otherwise, you do get a pink round dot eye to go inside of here. And if we look at the head, the head does have a little bit of forward motion here, just kind of up and down. It's kind of a weird hinge that's in there. It's not a front and back, much of a front and back. You know, you can get some of it there. You get some front and back there, but it's got kind of a weird motion there. Head will turn. You can get about that much out of it before it hits the side of this back skirt here. And same thing on the other side, it's kind of big in there. So if we go ahead and we take the head off, you can actually separate the head. And you'll see that the roller here does give you the option to be able to turn this. There's a little line there pointing to center. And that's where you would put your dot center with that, but on the front face of this. And you can turn this. So if you wanted to change the position of the eye, you can, but it's kind of a pain that you have to take the whole head apart in order to do that. So pop that back together and pop the head back on. So for the right arm, you get some forward motion here on the shoulder. Shoulder can move forward slightly arm will come all the way up and your outward motion comes to about there. You do get some screwdriver rotation here at the upper arm. So you can see that motion there where you can rotate that all the way around. As far as motion here in the lower arm here, there is no motion here. So there's only one bend in the arm and that's down here in the lower arm. And you can see that bends there. That takes us to the wrist and you get decent motion in the wrist, no problems there. So full motion in the wrist without issue. These are two piece hands, so they do separate. There are no pegs in these hands, but he has no problem holding this weapon. Um, so not that you really need it. None of his weapons are heavy enough to cause some issue. So that's that's a good point there. Moving on to the arm on the other side, you have this large massive shield here, which the shield can actually rotate here on this point all the way around. And the inside of the shield can actually pop out and fold down as such. And I'm not sure why there's not much movement once you do that. So I'm not really sure why they have it that way. But I find that kind of finicky. There's no like, even if I take this off, let's see. There's not really any good motions that I can tell for that. So, but it does pop out that way. So one cool thing is that you can twist it all the way to the front that way. because It comes off of that ball. And then that also moves up and down, just slightly, not, not a lot. So this arm here can move up and down to the side to side, just like this arm here could, but obviously it's blocked by the shield here a little bit. But if we tilt the shield all the way up as much as we can, we can get the arm up to about there without problem. Same mechanics on this side of the arm as the other arm. You get that screwdriver motion there at the upper arm and the one bend here at the lower arm and full rotation of the wrist 
in those two-piece hands. Skirts on the side, move up and down. And these actually will come all the way up as far as, as long as there's the arm doesn't get in the way, they will continue to move up. And very basic. They have grenades here on the side. Don't, well, they, they do come off, but they're not meant to be held. They're really just meant to just sit there. Front skirts move up and down, no problem. We have some rotation at the waist here. Nothing crazy. No, uh, as you would call, ab crunch, really. There's a little bit of up and down motion, but not much. For knees and legs, or legs, there is slight screwdriver turn left to right. So, slight turn there. You get full knee motion. It is nice that he has, he gets full knee bend here and there. <clears throat> no moving knee joint like a modern day master grade, but pretty decent uh, bending there. Cord is actually just a single piece that's slotted into the two holes here on the side. And that knee will come, it will come pretty high up actually. So, pretty good, not bad. Leg will come out to about there. And on the foot, there is this little flap here that will go up and down. And then last but not least is his foot. And pretty decent movement in the foot as well, actually. You can get him to do a pretty extreme foot motion there. The foot is actually probably the most flexible part on this whole kit, honestly. Little piece here on the back that does move is the thrusters here on the back of the feet and the legs. These will actually move, but not much, but they will move slightly. So you see, I just push that down and push it back up. So here on the backpack, things are pretty much static. Nothing much moves, however, the long rifle here does detach and move, obviously. So on this side here, the gun can detach from the backpack. So it's just kind of clipped in here in three places. So you have the one place was clipped into the gun, one place was clipped into the backpack, and then another clip here into the backpack just to kind of hold everything together. So if you just pull out, that will actually come apart there. And then you can proceed to actually run this gun down and around him. and. Let's go ahead and actually set that up. All right, so it took some finagling, but as you can see, we got it done. So here he is with that giant beam Gatling gun thing in his arms. And he actually holds it up pretty good. Um, the hard part is just making sure that you have a nice balance with the feet here in order to make sure that he'll stay standing with it. But. He can actually hold it. One thing that I do dislike is that here where this little red cord comes around, it doesn't fully go down into here and it's just not a good connection. I think I would actually probably glue this in um, just so that doesn't come out anymore. But yeah, you can actually get him to hold this and it has no problem holding it up. So then last but not least is your weapons and of course you get your your upgraded or your Zaku-esque, you get your zaku S rifle. And nothing too crazy happening here. It does have a little side handle that you can open and close here, as well as a peg here on the side so that this can go into his back skirt. The top canister section here does actually pop up and you can rotate that to the left put the beams or so that the gun looks like that or to the right and also to note that he also does come with extras of these so this one can come off and the two here underneath his shield those can come off and be put onto the gun themselves so let me just uh, pop one of these off there and as you can see, same mechanism there at the bottom. And you can pop that in. Only thing to note about these ones is that they don't come with the bottom piece, so they do look slightly different, but 
I mean, it's gonna be facing down anyway, so I guess, you know, you're not gonna see it anyway, so. And then last but not least, you get your Zaku-inspired Heat Hawk. And nothing funky going on with this thing. It is kind of cool. This piece here does fold down, but that's it. Nothing else goes on with that. So, unfortunately, there isn't a way to uh, clip this onto his body anywhere. So, if you're not using this, you'd have to put it away to the side somewhere so that it doesn't get lost. But yeah, guys, there he is, and I think he looks pretty decent. Um, you know, I'm happy with it for for what it is. You know, like like I said, this is a older kit. But you know, I think I'm actually going to put a little love into this, and I think I'm actually going to paint this guy up and see how it looks then. And because I'm not a huge fan of the pink, I think I'll actually do some custom colors on this thing. So with that said, guys. Thanks for checking out the video. Stick around for that next video and see how we decide to go ahead and paint this guy up in some custom colors. And we're, we'll try to we'll try our best to make this kind of mediocre kit look awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.